Right folks, today we're going to be starting to make some gammon hams and some ham shanks. Right, so we've got our, we've got our, our ham shanks, nice little ham shanks. We've got chunks of meat or pork leg. And then we've got a few big chunks over there, which is going to be the big hams. We've made up a brine, which we will inject into the, the meat. I've also made up extra brine, obviously, to brine it uh, in containers, which we put in and just soak, soak in, the, in the, the brining salt for 10 days. Then we'll take it out, we'll wash it, we'll rinse it, we'll let it settle for a day. Then we will do the smoking of it and then finally bagging and putting away. So today we'll start, we've got the nice ham hams there. And then we've got a whole lot of our ham shanks, bits of uh, pork, pork leg that, that we, we get, get, get big 10, 11 kilo legs and we chop it up so at least we've got some small ones as well. First, we're going to start by making up the brine, which I'll show you shortly. Right, so here's the brining salt that we use. It's basically a mixture of salt, brown sugar, Prague powder, the cure number one. And then we also make up a pickling spice and smashed garlic and cloves, which is in the pot. We've had it bubbling away for about 20 minutes and now it's just cooling off. I've got two potfuls today. So that is basically going to be ready. Not too, too, too long. Once it's cool, we will then add it with, with to water. There's a formula for amount of curing salt to water and everything. So just, just to get, get the, the quantities right. Okay, so basically I've got a, some, some of my brine that I've made up and we've got our, our ham shanks and basically we start, we put an injection in and get, get, get some inside. And we just go all over the meat, especially around the bone and get some more, get the next one, some squirts out. And keep it going like that. Okay, folks, so now we're going to inject the legs, the gammon legs, with some of the brine, especially around the bone, as, as I said earlier on, on the other one. Keep going around the bone, and then we just keep going all around, and we'll do, do all, all over, and then all of these will get done. And once those are done, we then make, make up the rest of our brine, put all the all the legs and the shanks and the pieces into containers, fill them up with, with brine and then put them in the fridge for 10 days. Okay, so I've injected all of the legs, all of the shanks and all of the pieces. Why we inject it with brine is to make sure that the cure gets right into where the bone is and inside the meat. Although we cure it for 10 days to two weeks on, on the bigger ones in the brine solution, it just helps it get right inside. So now we take all of these, put them into containers, mix up brine and fill, it, fill them up and then into the fridge for, for 10 days to two weeks on the bigger ones. Right, so here's one container, which is full of meat. And then I've got another one over here. They've both got lids that we can put on and then every, every day I give them a good shake, a good mix around, just to keep mixing the brine nicely with the meat. Right, so there's my ham brine. I make a big amount at a time. And I fill this bucket right up. So 164 grams per litre of water. I'm going to make two by 10 litre containers. 
I've mixed the brine in there. So now we we got to mix it and mix it and mix it like mad, so that it all dissolves in there. Once it's dissolved, we'll take it through and go and put it in the meat that we've got ready for brining. Okay, so I've poured all the brine in. You can see all the little bits and pieces. That's all stuff mainly from the garlic and the pickling spice that we put in. And then same on this one. That's now, they've both got about 10 liters of water of, of brine in each. So after 10 days, I will take out the smaller ones and two weeks for the bigger ham, jam and hams. Every day I will mix them around, give them a good shake, put something in there, give them a mix, move them all around and get them all to be nicely free of, of touching one another. Uh, they basically sort of float in there anyway, so it'll be two, 10 days to two weeks and we will see you again after that. Okay, so now I'm going to be making up another brine mix. Uh, I make up big, big batches and then when I need it, I just use it at the rate of 164 gram per liter of water. So, five kilos of salt, 2.75 or so kilos of sugar, and then 500 grams of cure number one, Prague powder, cure number one. Now, cure number one you use when you are smoking foods. If you're making things like salami, you don't use cure number one, you use cure number two. So, that's, oh, it's just a white powder. It's basically salt and then sodium nitrates or something inside, 6% or something. So now we add it into our bulk mix. I hope I'm going to have space. Not quite. Anyway, I will now get another container and split it all up mix it all and then at least we we have a whole lot of brine salts ready for whenever we we need and there we have it folks it's all been mixed now nicely so i've got two containers one big one one small one and all ready for when i need it Okay, folks, it's now 10 days since I started the gammons and the shanks off. They've been in the brine for 10 days. I've just taken them out and now we soak them in water for a few hours. And basically it's to remove any excess salt from the brine. And then once it's all been removed, we will then put them in the fridge overnight and I'll then smoke them tomorrow. They're looking nice. Okay, so we'll leave these for a few hours and then rinse them and then maybe a few more hours rinse them again and then smoke them tomorrow okay folks i've got a couple of my smaller hams that i've just taken out the fridge the few little flabby bits on the side so i've got to now tie these before we can smoke them so i'm also going to show you how to tie a butcher's knot at the same time so keep watching and get some tips on how to tie a butcher's knot. You need a pair of scissors or a knife and you need your string. So you start with a string underneath, always start like in the middle 
you've got a sh the long end here and the short end is here so you bring the short end you put it underneath the long end and basically just like a granny's knot you just tie it like that then you get this hand and you do a circle round you grab that one and you pull it through so that's there like that you can get your anything around there and you pull that tightly that's not going to go anywhere and now you just do another little loop around that one and that is tight and it's not going to go anywhere so do it again underneath short end we come underneath this one and just like a little granny's knot and we just push it down to the bottom then we get just a loop and we pull that through put something round pull it and tie it let's do one more come round short underneath little granny's knot push it down back down there do that pull it through tie it round and there you go. so now it's nice and tight just do one more as a safety pull it through and cut it off so that folks is how it's nicely tied round it's a bit of a funny shape this one but that's now going to hold it all together nicely very wet and murky day today but we've got to get our smoking done so i'll light my my fire lighters with my nice lighter from inkbird which is nice really works well and away we go we get those charcoals going okay this is now set up for the minion method you stack your charcoal all around the tin in the middle you can just leave a space i find it's easier to put a tin there and then we'll pour the charcoal inside once it's alight nicely now because i'm not using a lot of heat today you can see i've put another smaller ring to make the whole charcoal area smaller compared to using the main out outer ring so it reduces the amount of charcoal that we'll be using and obviously the amount of heat it's nice having the stainless steel table with the cutouts one for the smoker and then the other for one of my smaller webers we can then put the charcoal chimney starter on top of the small smaller weber and then get it going there i've got my nice new barbecue gloves today from inkbird last time i was doing this i nearly burnt myself so let's put some in that one And then in the other one. Okay, we just need a small fire today, as I said, so we don't have too many charcoal in today. We leave this now about 20 minutes to get all nicely hot inside. We take off the, the tin. We put some of our wood over need to get these sorted out a bit 
It's nice having these gloves. They really, really work well. So lots of work today. Got to smoke all of these shanks and hams. So we've got three layers going into the big smoker. So these are all prepared now waiting. I'm just waiting for the fire to be ready. They've all got their, their probes in. Not all of them, but most of them. And then we're going to have two grates in the smaller smoker. Those two there. And then we've got lots of controllers. We've got two Inkbird temperature controllers. And that those have a, a pipe from them. Those are little fans, these two in the front. They have a pipe from them, which just feeds the air into the smoker and it just maintains the temperature. The ones at the back, it's the two meter, meter blocks and the meter plus. So there's nine probes there total. And then the ink bird comes with a few probes as well. So we'll be good for checking and keeping an eye on all of the temperatures today. Right, so this smoke is all set up. We've got three layers in there. And then we've got our controllers. On this side here, we've got the ink bird with its pipe going into the bottom, which just feeds the amount of air that's needed to keep maintain a temperature. And then my ink bird, my meter probe units as well. So I would say five or six hours it's going to be ready. And then the smaller smoker, we've got two layers in there. And then we've got the ink bird with its pipe going in the bottom. And the meter block to look after this as well. So, yeah, all's good today. Yes, you guessed it. Started raining again. So, umbrellas are up. They'll stay up for the rest of the day, I think. Yeah, everything is looking a bit drowned now. But my umbrellas are working well. One of them took off. Found it in the next door neighbor's yard. We're about four hours in now. Wow, those are looking great. They really are. Okay, so these are ready. Oh, it's looking nice. Those are looking gorgeous. They really are. Now to do the other ones. Yeah, these ones are ready. I can take the, all of these out now. Okay, so that's all the hams done, all the shanks. Temperature about 152 internal, between 152 and 155, so that's perfect. There's the other lot. So they took about seven hours to do, a little bit longer than I thought, but the new Inkbird units, the uh, temperature control units, have really worked well. 
It's a very low temperature. I kept them to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit inside the smokers and they just turned out beautifully. They really have very pleased with the way they've turned out. Okay, so now I'll let them just sit here for a few hours just to cool off. Three or four hours. Then I'll put them in the fridge for a day and then I'll take them to the butchery and they will put them in vacuum bags for me. My, my vacuum machine is a bit small. So yeah, that's it. That's all done. I hope you enjoyed watching how all my hands are done. And we'll wait and see what, what's, what's in store for the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe to the channel. And see you again.